All right, let's get to the interesting part. We're going to actually take you through a ton of games that you've probably never heard of. And probably and aren't available in your country. <laughs> Internet exists, people. Internet. All right, the shipping is going to be the same as the markup at the game store, so... So we're going to start with a game called Inspectors. Now, I'm hoping many of you have seen an old movie, you might have heard of it, it's called Ghostbusters. It's a big New York movie. I don't know. So, the people are from there. This is a role-playing system that makes Ghostbusters happen. Right, you can't use it, you know, people like to brag about D&D, they try to like hit every hammer with it, you know, we can use this for any kind of story. And you see, remember in the D20 days it was big, D20 Modern, D20 Star Wars, we can use the same set of rules for every kind of story. No, you can't. All right, Inspectors will only tell that story of a company of people running a business Right, where they work together to solve supernatural disturbances. If you do not want to tell a story about that, you, this game will not do that. It does now, only the one thing and one thing only. The really interesting mechanic about this game that I want to highlight, there's the character sheet, and there's actually not that much on it. It's mostly flavor text. They tests. actually put the rules of the game in the character sheet. They had so much leftover space. So here's the deal. If I'm a player and I want to do something, I roll some dice. You know, athletics, uh, whatever. Yeah, it's always going to fall into one of those four skills. Academics, athletics, technology, or uh, contact. contact, right? So if you wanted to, say, uh, beat up someone on the street who wasn't giving you information, right? Because they definitely saw it, but they're walking away and they deserve a beating, right? You're going to use athletics for that, right? So I roll my dice. If I roll really well, I narrate what happens, and that's canon. That's the story now. By rolling well, by succeeding, I get control of the story for a little while. And if you fail at the roll, the GM gets control of the story for a little while. And right? he is against you. And yeah, and everything in between, right? So if you roll moderately well, it's like, okay, you get to tell the story, but the GM gets to slip in a negative aspect. Or if you roll poorly, it's like the GM tells the story, but the player gets to slip in one positive aspect. So if I'm researching the microfiche in the library to find out if the picture of the guy who we think did the murder looks the same 20 years ago and 50 years ago, if I roll a six, I narrate exactly what I found. And what did you find? So it turns out that we keep finding this guy's picture going all the way back to 300 years ago. What does the guy look like? Tell me about it. Ah, uh, he's got a really long nose. No, wait, so he's actually bald. Okay. He's got kind of some stubble going on. Yeah. He's, he's, he's holding a microphone. You better watch out for that guy. He's a dangerous guy. Now, let's say I roll a one. Ah. Uh, oh, you rolled a one? We were I rolled a one. Microfiche, huh? Yeah, I rolled a one. Oh, while you were looking through microfiche, right? You heard some noises uh, around the corner in uh, the back of the library. Uh, and then you went to investigate them. Look, I don't need his permission to make him go investigate. I'm telling the story. He failed, right? You went around this corner to investigate. The door closed behind you. And now something is grabbing your neck? Oh, no. Now we can continue and get, you know, go on to the next role, right? Because there's a new conflict now. The conflict is no longer the conflict of finding the thing in the microfiche in the library. It's not the conflict of him versus the monster in the back of the library. So instead of the mechanical mechanic Mechanical mechanic. Going back and forth, the currency of the game being hit points, damage per round, all that stuff in D&D-like games, the currency is who has control over the narrative, and the mechanics of the game just let you pass that currency around. It's sort of like you have a candle, and the candle could talk, or roll the dice to see who gets the candle. The other cool thing this game does is it has a shared space. There's a character sheet for your home base. How many of you play a game where you have a home base? You've got like these cool magic items, you've got your butler or whatever, you role play stuff out in your treehouse. The treehouse is a character here. There's rules for, hey, do we have a samouflage in the treehouse? I don't know, do we have a samouflage? Let's roll and check and find out. We do need to have one. So suddenly you don't have to worry about this minutia of do you have 108 gold pieces and 15 electrum pieces in your stash? You abstract that and roll dice. Do we have the thing we need for the plot right now or not? In fact, we do. We always do. Well, no, we don't always. We don't. If I'm going to tell the story of my character here, I'm not going to talk about my strength stat. That's not interesting. And it turns out that that's the only part of my character that is character, that is story, who he knows, what he's done, where he's going, why he fights for what he fights for. That's it. And that whole character sheet, that's it. Yeah, so, you're trying to tell me this is a role-playing game, but what percentage of it has anything to do with role-playing? That percent. And most of that is a picture. Now, you've been